We're going to be speaking if we have there the intro we're going to be speaking how important it is to know the things to know about the things and understand of what God will want to speak of his occult mysteries God is the Borelon, the creator of the whole universe. God is a God that's creative. You see, for example, these things of social media, the Facebook, for example, there are many bad things that we see in social media. We see a lot of bad things. It doesn't construct everything that we see in, in social media but sometimes the enemy takes what God created what God created you're saying apostle that the Lord created Facebook the social media networks yes Daniel said that the Science will be greater. A young man, I don't believe the, the devil had inspired him. I think if the devil inspired him, then the word wouldn't reach many people with the gospel. But a young man, a young man that start started playing with his cell phone he was a jew a jew he started to play with the the cell phone and suddenly he had an idea let i'm going to create something for people to communicate so they could interact so they can see each other so the the man created the facebook face means the face, the, the book, for them, for them to interact, repeat, the El Borelam went inside there. Who was the one who created us, us in his image? Say face. Who's the owner of the book? God. John said, and I saw the books and the books, books were open. Amen. I can assure you that there are many things, my loved ones, that we see and we as ignorant, we just leave it. God wants to take you to another level in life. God wants to take you to a new dimension in life. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna put barriers to him, it's not that God cannot go inside and break that barrier that you set him, but it saddens the Holy Spirit because something that he doesn't touch is your free will. Your free will to choose what to do in life. So we need to, the anointment for, to, for us to be creative. The Borel Lam could give you an idea. In the times of COVID, it was prohibited the, the, to, the preach because we all were in our homes. And so I saw it during this time in a dream. He gave me the idea to preach through the social media and it was because of the anointment. I said to Pastor Joaquin, let's sit down. And he was with a Hawaiian shirt and a Hawaiian short. So I put on the talit and I was in a sports clothing 
And so we, that day impacted the whole country. Because you know that I have my ways. But I know that this is what God gives me. Look at your neighbor and say ideas. That's why it's important to know the anointment. I know that for someone I'm speaking in Japanese, in Hebrew, in Chinese, especially to the Paraguayans that who are introverted. So we're going to break, say to your neighbor, we're going to break certain structures. The Dominican, the, Chile, the Chileans and and Argentinians, the, when I speak of anointment, they know about this topic. But there are many barriers, there are many things that we need to break here in this country. So now look at your neighbor and say, we're going to go to another level. To know the anointment, we need to know something very important. That's in the Trinity. Say, Father. That's the God of the whole universe. The Son that's on the right hand of the, of the Father. And he also said that we wouldn't be orphans. And so he sent the Holy Spirit. So he can be with us all day until the end of the world. I remember that I had a dream once and I saw a person with a tunic that was completely white sitting among the people and you know the pull of the of the Bible the one who preached like with fire he didn't know the the baptisms of the of the Holy Spirit I saw and suddenly, I asked that person, who is he? Who are you? What, what catches my attention is your appearance. I'm the Holy Spirit, he said. Yes, I'm the Holy Spirit, he said. But I think your place is the pulpit. No, that pastor re removed me from my place. And God had shown me this in my dream. And I said, what do we do? No, I cannot do, I cannot do anything until he surrenders his will to me. In the entire world, there are pastors. The five ministries sometimes that they preach the sermon. But it's not the Holy Spirit any longer through them. You can speak of Jesus. You can preach a good sermon without the guide of the Holy Spirit. But what happens? That makes you not succeed. So you need to know the most important person today after you in this place that's the one that gives you the word the one that gives you the gives the pastor the message the one who gives you the strength to come here but there are, sometimes you don't want to come but there's a voice that tells you to come so you need to get to know that marvelous person it's the holy spirit he wants to be your friend he wants to be your friend. Call him if you're going in a, if you're having a lonely time because he wants to reveal to you in that moment during your life. Amen. Now, Isaiah 61, we use it at a, as a central text. What's the anointment? Repeat with me. The anointment. 
the unction of God is the power of God. All the men through the Holy Spirit in order to be sent and for them to succeed in what they do they need of the unction. All the Christians we need of the unction of the power of God. What's the difference between the Holy Spirit and the unction? The Holy Spirit is the Lord. The unction is his power. Okay. And in Hebrews, the word unction means raspar. It means to... S Why? Because the pastors of Israel, it means to... They they it means to scrape. What they did is they they scraped the sheep and they poured the olive oil against the pests. But before pouring the oil, they scraped them. If we take that in a spiritual truth, the anointment, the unction won't come to your life if he first doesn't remove the parasites. The anointment comes to remove the parasites. What do you need to go forward in life? For God to give you peace an unction or for the unction of God to come and stay with me. I will be with you all day until the end of the world. Your face shows me that you don't have Christ all day. I see you afflicted. I, I see you mad. I see you without hope. Your face shows me that the Holy Spirit isn't with you. But today that's going to change because the unction will come to remove the parasites. The demons that has stuck to you like parasite to your blood, through your body, through your genes. So the unction comes to stay what this Paul said even though we're weak even though we break God wants to deposit his anointment his unction in the glass in your glass Before, in the Old Testament, the unction was over the kings. It came over prophets, over Levites, over people that were exclusive. But nowadays, according to the book of Joel, repeat with me, Joel 2.28, you can read it later, it says that the... It spe he speaks, it says that at the end times, I will pour of my spirit over all flesh. Look what God says. Not only over prophets, not only over priests, but over all flesh. <coughs> the unction is available for the people of God. So we see the book of Acts, chapter 2. We see of the 120 that were waiting for the arrival of the Holy Spirit. When the unction came over them there in Acts 2, you know what happened. The lives of the 120, the, the disciples that were waiting there, their life changed radically. They, 
it was accomplished what they were waiting for. They were waiting to be um, empowered by the unction to be like Jesus, to be witness of Jesus in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in, Ju in Judah, in the whole world. When the unction came over the uh, disciples, they could in that moment have the braveness to go and encounter the multitudes and the multitudes gave themselves to the Lord. Peter, when he was anointed, when he had his first ple preach with the power, a thousand souls gave themselves and they were baptized and they started to follow the way of the Lord. What made Peter be an ordinary man and then later be an extraordinary? It's the unction of the Holy Spirit. I want to say to you that the unction won't come to you from being an ordinary person you're going to be an extraordinary person God is will start use you when the unction comes over you you know people that want to use God and they think that God uses them they don't hit why because in reality they're using God it's not that God is using them even though you preach well why because they need the unction when the unction comes over your life the power of God the dunamis that's when God starts to use you amen let's go to the book of first of Samuel chapter 10 verse 6 And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. In 10.1, the prophet Samuel uh, anointed Saul as a king. We see in the verse 6, the prophet Samuel prophesied to Saul, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. When the unction came over Saul, he, it came with power, and it came with the capacity for him to term himself as a prophet, and his character changed. He was moved as another man. What will the unction do with you when he comes over you? The unction of God will start to give you power of God in order to understand the scripture, to pray, power, to go forward. It will change your way of speaking because it changed Saul's way of speaking. He converted himself as a prophet. And the most interesting thing, he changes your character. The unction is going to make you have that character. You're not going to stand with the talents, with gifts, you're going to stand the problems with the character of Christ. When the unction comes over you, it's important to know this. As you, the unction came over him, the prophet anointed him, and his life was transformed. Amen? Judges 14.6, we see Sanson. It says the spirit came over Sanson and he killed the lamb without anything having in his hands. 
there's something strong within the pastor Ricardo. The only thing that Sanson had is that he didn't give accounting to anyone. He didn't recognize fatherhood, even though he was anointed. That's what me, many people say, Dalila, no. The problem of him was that he was rebel, but he was anointed. And we see the anointed came over Sanson, and he teared up a lamb. Remember, a lamb, a sheep. You know, to tear a sheep is something difficult. You can do that humanly. It means that Sanson had the strength to tear a lamb. But what happened with the lion? He also teared the lion. So that meant that his strength was multiplied. People that find themselves with the unction, they have a strength. That's extraordinary. There are people that have lost strength here. That change a lot. That they don't have hope to go forward. There's good there's good news. The unction is here and it will come over you just as it came as Sanson. That lion can represent problems that you're going through. But it's the Lord says that you were gonna take serpents in your hands. It doesn't speak of literal serpents. When you touch the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom will have problems with you. But if you take a serpent, the serpent represents a demon. The lion represents demon. A prince of darkness. What did he what did Samson do? He teared it down. Behind a problem that you have, there's a demon that's blocking your life, that's causing you problems. And what does you need? The unction to tear him. And that will come over your life today. How many of you give a great round of applause to the eternal? Entering there in Isaiah 61, it says, Good news of salvation for Zion. Who's Zion? Zion is Jerusalem. It's Israel. But we as a church, the ones who are... We, we also apply this for us. Zion is also the church. And here, it says... Isaiah says, the spirit of, of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed. Here, Isaiah speaks that the spirit of the Lord is over him because he had anointed him to preach. And, and God doesn't send anyone that he doesn't anoint, okay? To preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who's something who's captive? Someone has, lo has lost strength. That person that's in your home that has lost hope, it, he needs for you to have the unction. Why is for, for that person to recover strength? And it says... And it says to bind up the broken hearted, to bind up the broken hearted. What's a bind? A bind is, is something that we close a, a scar because we try to join bones that are broken. There are people who are broken. There are women who are broken. There are men that who are broken. They have lost hope. You suffered rejection, even from your family. You went through a violation. You got separated. You don't know how it is, the pain that a person that separates from his partner. It doesn't happen to me, but I've seen my children in the Lord that have come with that problem. So, some of them were restored in their marriages, but others learned to heal, to forgive. 
And why does the unction come to bind the broken heart? The broken heart. He puts a coverage because a person that has broken hearted, he tends to commit suicide, to go back. A person who has broken hearted in a house has bitterness in his house. And when the unction of the Holy Spirit comes, he covers, he binds. Amen. So what will he do with a broken hearted to do with his unction? The Lord will cover him, will bind him. How many of you give a great round of applause to his name? It says that the prophet came to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound with the unction. The unction that he that brings opening of the prison that are bound. It doesn't only speak of physical prison, but people who are in captivity. For example, drugs, alcoholism, pornography. Sickness of their minds. You're tied to pills because they have harmed you. They hurt you in life. You're captive. You have a spirit of death. To And you want to commit suicide. So he comes to open them up from prison. What sets them free? What sets the captives free? The unction, the oil of the father. Not the pastor. The pastor is only... It's only a way of using. So you need to give thanks to Jesus Christ when you see people that are are in deliverance in a massive prayer line. It's the unction that's opening from them from the prison. And the unction also comes to proclaim the liberty and the vengeance of our God. The unction when he comes over us, he changes your vocabulary. You start proclaiming the year of the goodwill of Jehovah. What year is this? No, there's no money. There's ruins. We need money. When the unction hits you, my loved ones, you start to proclaim the year of the good will of Yahweh. This will be my greatest year. Even though the, pro the economical problem says the contrary, this will be my best year. Good will means that God will have good will to take you to another level in life. That's what the unction does. He, he gives you a mentality of declaring the good will and the vengeance of the day of the God. The day in which the enemy... How do, do you commit vengeance against your enemy? God doesn't kill your enemy. God blesses you before him. Listen to me what I'm saying. It seems in Psalms 23. He sets table before them. What does this mean? If God kills your enemy, well, glory to you, God. But you know what? You know what, my loved ones? When God starts blessing you before your enemies, it's the worst thing that's for your enemy. You know why? Because if they do not repent, the, the spirit of jealousy will kill them. 
and to proclaim the, the year of the goodwill of Jehovah and the day of the vengeance of our God. God will bless you before your enemies. A person who has also lost a family member. You know, do you believe if you lost a father, mother, you, you lose them, the unction doesn't repair you, but it gives you hope. It gives you hope that the ones who are, we are in, in Christ, we have hope. And the hope, for example, we have a resurrection. When we speak of hope, everything has to do with resurrection. If a person leaves and dies, you have hope. So when you miss that family member, you have hope. The unction brings you this. Why does the hope come to remember that your family member didn't die, but he's asleep, he's with the Lord, he's resting. There are people that are stuck to material things, to a house, to a car, something material, but suddenly there's an economic problem there, and it's like a death. For those type of people, the unction also comes to bring, to console them. The unction gives the power to untie a new seasons for the afflicted. Jesus said that he has all authority on earth, over earth and under the earth. We people who are in Christ, we have power, we have authority. We're seated in places of authority. And when the unction comes over us, we give order for the people who are in ashes and afflictions to give glory for the people who are, for, for the people to have joy, for the people who have a mantle, a garment of joy. There are pastors that need to change the way of preaching. I order to you in the name of Jesus for the peace and the joy to come upon you. And that person says, wow, what happened to me? The Lord Jesus Christ changed them. But say with me, when the unction isn't going to respond if there's a person that unties the unction. How many, how many people give a great round of applause to the eternal? Let's go to the book of Zachary. I know that there are many, there are many nations that are connecting. Zechariah chapter four, verse one. It says the chandelier of gold and the olive trees. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking up in his sleep and said unto me, what sees thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and the seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the, the top thereof and two olive trees by it upon one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not is not what this be? And I said, No, my Lord. The unction of the Lord comes to make reality your projects. If there are people that are have projects that are blocked projects that are blocked i come to say on behalf of the lord that the unction comes to make your projects be true zachary means that god doesn't forget of your project he doesn't forget of you god doesn't forget of the works that he has started with you. God doesn't, 
So he shows Zachary everything that has to do with the unction. The seven tubes, the menorah, that represents in Revelations the seven churches of Jesus Christ. But it also represents in Isaiah 11 the seven spirits of God. He showed over the menorah a deposit where the unction is being administered for the men for the projects there are deposits in the heavens and he also showed to the prophet Zechariah the two olive that those two olive represented Joshua Joshua and Sorobabel to reconstruct the house of the Lord look at your neighbor and say the unction of the Holy Spirit comes to make your projects be true notice what the angel said that spoke in the dreams of Zechariah this what you see is a, prof a prophetic word it's not with troops but it's with my not with strength but with my spirit why do we why did sort of need that that word because he was discouraged there are people who are discouraged because they don't have resources they're discouraged because they don't have the finances in order to create their projects but what does the Lord say the Almighty that the unction comes to give you a word a prophetic word and the and the Word of God says there in 7 Chronicles 22 believe in the Lord and you will be secure believe in his prophets and you will be prospered and the word came over this man that was discouraged keep calm because the the project won't be with your strength but with the spirit of the Lord how many of you say amen when the unction comes the word the prophetic word is being untied and the prophetic word comes to reaffirm your projects amen what was the what was the thought of Zorobabel it's, it was a great responsibility it's a great respons responsibility for me to construct the house of the Lord this is so big I can't I cannot but what does the word of God send? God who sent the word. Sorobabel was discouraged because this project was a giant before him. It was a mount. Amen. I come to say on behalf of the Lord that the unction comes to remove all discouragement. And there was a there was a disparagement a, they, there was disparagement for the things that he was doing for the Lord from the people and the Lord sent and and the Lord said that he will that he will embarrass the people if you have proudness if you say my project my project the unction isn't for you when you start saying my my work is my job is the Lord my the project that I have to improve the work of God my family is of the Lord then the Lord will be responsible of that project with the unction how many of you say amen give a great round of applause when the unction comes God unties an an unction of amazement over the people
for the and for the people that belittled your project the, the people who belittle you will be proud will be in joy they will say wow oh god was really with him and when they ask you you're gonna say how did you do it it was the unction of the lord it was the power of the lord that was within me to his name the unction of god opens doors let's see someone who's needing a door to open isaiah 40 are you Isaiah 45 here God chose an un the King Cyrus this King Cyrus he 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 was going to untie an anointment and there were powers that were going to come I want you to Speak the word. Say, I'm a Cyrus. There were, it says Cyrus, you're going to put your first name and last name. You're going to put your first name and last name because the word says that God says to this, say the Lord to his anointed. Say, he's speaking to me, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. When the unction comes, Listen, God takes him of his right hand. This means that when someone has the unction, God pairs with him. The Lord Jesus says to his disciples, starting from today, I'm not going to call you disciples, but I will call you friends. Because God knew that he was going to the Father and that the unction will come over the disciples. How many of you say amen? Those those who have the anointed start be, they they move from being simple Christians to be friends of God. God partners with you with your project. Now it says in the word when the unction came and he told Cyrus, I put anoint the anointment over you to subdue nations to loose the loins of kings to subdue nations before him and to loose the loins of kings and it says in the in the hands in the declare in the declaration of a person who's anointed the destiny of the country is there how many of you say amen to the word it is not with what the president says listen the president if he goes near a person that's anointed and they're untied they go to another level but if god put and if many don't go near the anointed, they're going to fail. They're going to be like Nabucodonosor. But what does the Lord Jesus Christ say today? It says the anointment comes and gives you authorities to subdue nations. Stop, daughter son that my family is not going to convert but because if the anointment is over you you have the power to subdue nations and nations means it's a group of families in order to subdue nations and to lose the loins of kings. How many of you are fathers of a family? Do you know that you're, you're raising children of the Lord? Do you know that you have in your home someone that in the future will be a businessman? Someone that's going to impact this nation, in, that is going to impact the territory. And when the unction comes over someone, 
it comes to loose the loins of kings. I, as to my children in the Lord, I say I untie you to something powerful. And God imparts gifts to my generation. I say I untie. My children won't be without knowledge. Listen to me. In if in the school they did bully to you, you said that you're a no a good for nothing because you have a basolic mother father. You have them to lose the loins of kings. You're gonna be a businessman. You're gonna be a lawyer. You're gonna be someone important in life. You're gonna be someone that goes for in life. to his name. Amen. It says the doors, gates shall open and shall not shut because of the anointment. You're going to make the crooked places straight. Peter in the went to the temple of the Hermosa when the man was there Peter said that he didn't have money nor gold but he had the anointment and suddenly the feet and ankles of the man got straightened the anointment has the power to straighten the crooked places. Some one day they say, one day they said to me that Paraguay would be a place of drugs, but I'd come to declare because of the anointment, Paraguay will reform. People are going to convert to God. Drug dealers are going to convert to God. How many of you say amen? to his name and the same thing I declare for the nations that are watching us to his name how many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord The anointed person doesn't speak anything, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of the secret places. I, when I preach, I am shaking the city. That's why when I come to a territory, the devil raises against me. The press raises against me. It, because I come in as an ovni as an alien a not identified object what do i want to say that there are places that are not prepared for what i have they don't read the bible they don't know christ deeply so for them it's weird for them for them making fun of me is enough and they don't notice and they were never notice because they they didn't even notice of jesus jesus reached many places and many didn't discern that he was christ and they belittled their time of his time of visit say to your neighbor what i have within me will shake cities, will shake nations, will shake territories. What's within me, the unction of the spirit that I'm gonna receive today will change territories. Now, how do I receive the unction? It's a great question. How many of you want to receive it? There's a way of receiving it. 
How many of you want to receive the unction? I, I ask again. Now, standing the process, there's a price you have to pay. You're, if you go to the first, the book of First of Samuel, you're gonna find where you need to go through for the unction to come over you. First of Samuel, it says, there it is. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. We see the prophet Samuel crying for Saul because God has rejected. God can reject you. Now listen, the prophet crying for Saul, the voice of the Lord came. You will go to the... He's speaking of the King David here. Where was the future anointed in Bethlehem? The place is important for the unction to come over you. Look at your neighbor and say, in important places for the unction to come over you, David was in Bethlehem and God had projects for his life through the prophets. Bethlehem means house of bread. If you do not go through Bethlehem, you're not going to receive the unction. Bethlehem means the place where you receive the rejection of the of the people you mostly love people that you mostly love people that you say this he will never betray me he will never speak of me he will never go against me he will never you know you know the strong shirt he's never going to stab me with a knife bethlehem that's a place where sometimes people, even of your, if you're of your own family, reject you. The father, the father, David's father, was not seeing the potential that he had. His his brothers belittled, belittled him, but God was seeing the future of him. And it, that also happened with Joseph. Who were the ones who sold Joseph? His own brothers. You get ready to go to Bethlehem. You come to Christ. And the first thing that that's raised against you is the unconverted family. The grandparent that's unconverted. The, the father that's unconverted. Why do you go to the church, they say? It's, everything is a lie. How many want the unction? You will need to stand there in Bethlehem. That's a process to receive the unction. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? Second Samuel verse two, verse one. Two twenty one, and all the tribes of Israel came to Abram. We are your bones and your flesh, and even and even before Saul reign over us. Say Ebron. Ebron means in Hebrews the place of the pact. If you want to receive the unction, you will need to go through Ebron. Where are the pastors that are watching me through the internet? Raise your hands. How many of you say amen? Do you want to be 
anointed to win souls for the Lord, you need to go through Ebron. It's a place where the house of the Saul goes against you. The place where people instant, instead of helping you go against you. It's a place where people that they say they they call you they call themselves a pastoral group. They give you they give you their back. It's the house of Saul. Amen. There's a rejection of everyone. Of everyone of your nation. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me. There's a price for the unction. But glory to God if we pay that price. Because when the unction comes over you. God will recognize you. Now when Saul went to God's presence, we see here that the people of, of, of Israel was recognizing the new king. But before it was people that were against him. Amen. Say, I will go through Abram. I'll go through the place of criticism in my own country, in my own nation, in my own neighborhood. They're going to call me a crazy person. They're going to be a fanatic. They're going to say that I'm a false prophet. Look at your neighbor and say, they're going to say that I'm the worst because they envy Abram. Are you able to go through that place? I look at your, I look at your eyes. The human being has the soul so stuck to what the people will say about them. But if you want to be anointed, you need to have your soul surrender to Christ and the soul to God and your ears listening what the Holy Spirit is saying. There in Hebron, God is going to treat you that part to untie the unction. Do not forget that Jesus went to Gethsemane. Gethsemane, what re represents? It's a place where the Lord was confirming an unction, a physical unction that Jesus received. Remember that when the un before the unction comes, that's going to impact territories, nations. There's first an, a physical unction. Who anointed Jesus for the unction? It was the woman that had the perfume, the alabaster pers perfume. If you read the, the word of the eternal in Matthew 26, it says that, that a woman went in the place where they were sharing with the disciple. Jesus was with his disciples. And this woman anointed him from the top of his head to the, the bottom of his feet. It was the perfume, the alabaster perfume. It was the best perfume. Judas started saying and other who were interested. It's a waste, they said. We could give the money to the poor. And Jesus said you will have the poor always, but what this woman did will be registered in the books of memories. And where this gospel is preached, they're going to speak of this woman. Because this woman with, with this vase of alabaster has anointed me for my sepulture to his name. This woman anointed this, wo this Jesus for his sepulture. Because God was going to face death. And to the men and women of God, God doesn't send them to death with, without anointing them first. How many of you say amen? God prepares the spirit. God prepares the soul. And God prepares the body of the men and women of God before taking them to heaven. Jesus needed that unction and for that unction to confirm in Gethsemane because Gethsemane was confirmed with Jesus prayed all night and his 
His sweat was like blood. And their unction, an uh, angel of unction came to, and he touched him with his finger and he was straightened. That unction was confirmed there. Why did Jesus need that unction? Because after that, he was going to face three principalities before death. Three principalities. The first, Peter rejected him. The second is the betrayal of, of Judah. And number three, he was going to be exposed in a public and before authorities. Three principalities that he needed to stand and fourth was the death. You to face battles and be a warrior and to face the principalities, you need of the unction. I don't know warriors of, of Jehovah who aren't anointed. That's why nowadays we see a lot of people that surrender in the battlefield. Why? Because they want to go and face the demons and Satan without the unction. I come to prophesy the people to prepare that God has the, prepared the unction of the alabaster perfume. And God's going to prepare you for the day of your death and hour of your death to his name. Alleluia. Holy God. Powerful. This wasn't a uh, public unction like Jordan. The Jordan was public. This was uh, internal because it was in a, in a room, in a private place with people because God was going to be anointed to die. Jesus was going to be anointed to die. There, say to your neighbor, there are unctions to heal, to deliver, to restore. There are places where I receive the unction, where I'm prepared to receive the unction. But the most marvelous thing, there are unctions in order to die. I have that unction. Amen. You're anointed to die. To his name. I prophesy that God is going to prophesy to you to die. He's going to anoint you to die. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? The unction has ingredients in Exodus 30, 22. We see the ingredients, the first ingredient that the unction needed to have. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take though unto three principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and sweet cinnamon, half of so much, even 250 shekels of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil and tin. He had the ingredient, the first ingredient was the mirror. The mirror. The unction has the mirror. Say the mirror. In the in Hebrew means death. Blessed be the Lord. These are the the messages that don't have many amen. It means death. It's a very bitter plant. It's a red color and it's useful to elaborate perfumes. In, in Hebrew, it means suffer. It's, it's death. You need to be anointed to suffer. Why? Because in the first attack that Satan hits you, may it be a sickness or death or something, or they start to speak of you, you're going to go out running. So that's why you need the unction of the mirror for you not to be a coward. And the Lord says, I'm going to untie unction of mirror. The, seven, the second element or ingredient that the unction needed to have was the cinnamon. This cinnamon is in the center of the 
of the tree, it's a red color. In Hebrew, it represents the gifts and the character of God. Amen. When the unction comes over you, the unction of cinnamon comes to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it comes to have to give you the character of God. There are people that are going to receive today the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And their character, character is going to be moved to another level. To his name. And, and, and the calamus is like ginger. And it's red. Now, it, it resists... It resists winter and the unction takes you to be under unction under authority. You're not a you're not a common person, but you're a, an ambassador of the kingdom of heavens here on earth and everything that you tie here is going to be tied in heavens. Everything you lose here is going to be loosened in heavens. You understand that Jesus Christ was given all authority in on earth on top of the earth and under earth you reign with him how many of you say amen and you understand with him you reign here you understand that you're king and priest with him the unction saved me with of the calamus and the cassia is a smelling plant in hebrews it means to humble yourself to adore jesus christ when you receive the unction of the of these ingredients you start being like jesus jesus is the example of a dedicated life in worship of the father you start to worship the heavenly father jesus christ and the holy spirit you understand that even Every time the Lord anoints you more, he will take you to a greater search. How many of you to a greater humble, humbleness? Give a great round of applause to Christ. He's in Isaiah, it says that the, the yoke will rotten because of the unction. The devil puts oppression over you. Witchcraft, sorcery yokes in the mind everything that has you tired everything that has you tired and tied to immorality to drugs that's a yoke that the lord puts over you there here in the general context the lord says assyria is an instrument of mine he's speaking that even satan is an instrument of his blessed be the lord and the lord gives him a promise to the people of Israel, to his people. There's a time that will come that I will punish Assyria and the yoke that I put oh that I, I put over you to be servant of the devil will be rotten because of the unction. To his name. How powerful is our God? How powerful is the Lord? Hallelujah. Holy God. Okay, Psalms 92, Psalms 9, 92, 10. And with this, I finish. But my horn shall do exalt thee, the horn. But you will increase my strength just like of the buffalo. You, you know the, the African buffalo, the African buffaloes there in Discovery Channel. They have, they resist all type of climates, desert, heat, winter. They are people that hit, the lion cannot catch them. The buffalo, in a prophetic word, 
it represents evangelism. It's the strength of the evangelism. So here the psalmist David says, you will strengthen my strength just like the buffalo. I will be anointed with a fresh oil. The Lord says a fresh, it's not a past oil. It's not a future, it's a present oil. A fresh oil right now say right now now that fresh oil when it comes it makes everything change in our lives today i spoke of many blessings that this anointment is going to untie i want you to activate your faith in order to receive how many of you want to receive people that are watching through internet how many of you want to receive of the anointment? Put amen there in the text box. Holy Spirit, God, I give you thanks. Raise your hands. Thank you for this powerful word, for this powerful message, for this powerful science. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for you today, your people, could go to another level of understanding. May they receive the unction. Many came from faraway places. There are pastors here. There are sons here that want the anointment. And I ask you for you to impart because you come for the church who's, who's prudent that have their oils filled. And I ask you in this moment, for you to untie the unction for them to be filled of you and they receive the transformation just like Saul of character of gifts of charisma may they receive Lord ideas because of the unction may they be taken to another level the unction father of the of the cinnamon of the cassia of the calamus the unctions, may they come over the, of the mirror. The unctions, may they be prepared of all things for all types of situations. I'm seeing now a blindage and God is going to blind you. God will blind emotions, minds, hearts. God is going to blind lives in the name of Jesus. Imagine a pregnant woman that needs to go to a process of pain. The pregnant needs to, of the unction to stand the pain. God compares with the Gospel of John, the process of law of the process of life with the process of the pregnant.